In this nugget, we will be looking at the relationship between force and acceleration. Newton's second law states the following. The force on an object is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration of the object. The force refers to resultant force, which is the total force that acts on an object. The independent variable is the force applied. The dependent variable is the time measured. Control variables include the mass of the object. In this experiment, there shall be falling masses which can land on your feet. Be careful to stand out of the way. Make sure you have a clearly labelled results table. You should have a column for the weight applied, the initial velocity of the object, the final velocity of the object, the time taken, and finally, the acceleration. The weight applied will vary between 0.1 Newton and 1.0 Newton. You are going to need a trolley, a ruler, a timer, a hanger, eight 10 gram masses, two light gates, light gate cables, a pulley, and a piece of string. Clamp the pulley at the end of the table securely. Adjust the height of both light gates so that the card on top of the trolley cuts through the infrared signal. Then connect your light gates to the data loggers. Set both of them to record speed. And make sure the two light gates are a reasonable distance apart. One meter is good. Place all your masses on the hanger. Then attach the trolley to the hanger using your string. Make sure that the string is securely placed on the pulley. Start both of your data loggers and then let go of the trolley. Start the timer when the trolley moves past the first light gate and then stop the timer when the trolley moves past the second. Move the trolley back to its original position. Remove one 10 gram mass and place it back on the trolley. The reason you do this is to keep the mass constant. Record your initial and your final velocities and the time taken to move between the two light gates. Reset the data loggers and the timer and then repeat. Repeat this for all masses until there is only the hook left on the string. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. And to calculate it, we're going to look at the change in velocity divided by the time taken. The change in velocity is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity. U is the initial velocity, V is the final velocity, and T is the time taken. Be careful as your data loggers might be recording in centimeters per second. Make sure your units are consistent. As an example, for the first line, acceleration is equal to 195 minus 3 divided by 0 0.98, which gives you 196 centimeters per second squared. Complete the same calculation for all other data points. To look at the relationship between the weight and the acceleration, we're going to be plotting a graph. Weight is on the x-axis and acceleration is on the y-axis. Make sure your scale allows you to plot all data points. Plot your data points as a scatter graph and then add a line of best fit. You should find that the line of best fit is a straight line and ideally you should cross the origin. If your graph is a straight line and it does cross the origin, you can describe the weight applied and the acceleration of the system to be directly proportional to each other. Using Newton's second law, F is equal to ma. If the mass is kept constant, you would expect the force, which is the weight applied in this case, and the acceleration to increase with a constant ratio, hence directly proportional. Therefore, the results support Newton's second law.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Subscribe to our channel to check out more of Centuries content and visit our website to find out about our learning platform.